We are live. Let me refresh this thing. Make sure we are good to go. Make sure you can see me and hear me uh, in HD. And we are set. So the B had to uh, reset his router. Um, it, well, I was talking to him right now. We were set, ready to go. And then it had like this weird pixel thing looking like a 240p or something. So he's going to figure that out. He's going to jump back in. Mindset Monday will be ready to go. But first, who is here in the chat? Let's see. Respect everybody. No hate. What's up? The man, Mr. Information in hand. Uh, William Perry, what happened to the Dolphins? This is Mindset Monday. <laughs> We need to keep our heads up. Uh, they need you as a QB, not behind that offensive line. I would get destroyed the same way Tua got destroyed. They left uh, pass rushers on block, let them do whatever they wanted. It was disgusting and embarrassing. You know what? I should just be part of the coaching staff at least. Uh, let me see, D-Bay, Lucky and Three Legs, A-N, Mile High Hustle, Cardinals, they're doing well. Uh, sneaker Pickers, Zapatos, what's up? Hola, Big Bunny Mo. Uh, Glenn stealing all the bandwidth, Astro Drip, what's up? Uh, Rashard, let me see, you're taking all the pixels with the new camera. Uh, what up, George, Kaiser? Last of a dying breed, what up? Where's Watson, sneaker pickers? The, I don't know. Here's the thing, though. If we wanted to get Watson, I don't know how his cases look. What's going to happen with that? Jail time, maybe. Uh, it's not looking good. Now, if all of this is like he was innocent, nothing to do with that kind of stuff, there was like consensual stuff, it's kind of like it's different. But as of right now, it's not looking good. Um, so I don't want any piece of that either. If bringing that kind of stuff, I'd rather just lose <laughs> instead of losing twice and having someone else, you pay all this money for a QB and then ends up going to jail and can't even play anyway. Uh, let me see who kicks. What up? Oh, spies. Hmm. That, that could be true, especially with the B come in here. Um, uh, let me see. Oh, he wants a sun tat. I could definitely do that. My high. Sneaker Pickers, James, Kevin, and here comes the B. What up? We're live. We're good. What up? What up? Um, you look a little bit better. It was still kind of kind of pixeled. It's kind of coming back here and there. Um, I don't know why, but what up? What up? Um, you look a little bit better. Oh, there you go. There's a. There you go. But we'll we'll work with it and go for it. Right, we'll push through this thing. Um, let me see Zapatos update hairstyle. It was just it's just getting I gotta cut it. But I like I like that there's some hair to work with. Uh we paid for Wentz, we're in the same boat, Richard. Yeah, and Dolphins play Colt in two weeks. And uh Brissette going against his old team. I don't think two is gonna play for like the next three games. That's what I think. Why? Bruised ribs. Oh, bruised ribs, that's what yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, Koo Kicks is looking 32 bit instead of 16 bit, like the Super NES. Uh, tables have turned, big money mo. I don't know, Glenn's like suppressing my camera. <laughs> Something is happening, dude. Because I, like, I was in the dark in pixels. Dude, on my and... feed, it looks nice, but what? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's weird. I don't know what is going on. Let me switch to like a lower resolution, maybe it's too big. Okay, he's trying. He's going to work on stuff. As long as you can see the B, you can hear the B. That's all that matters. Yeah. As long as preaching B is in full effect, that's all that matters. All right, so today's episode, uh, learn from the competition. Now, instead of beating the competition, so what can we learn from the competition? And uh, this is from Simon Sinek, so... Oh, B I B like yeah there you go. Oh, see B he, looks he, way he, better he's, now. He's my friend. He's my friend. Yeah, Simon's he's your homie. Friend. Yeah, Simon's your uh, he's your homie. Yeah, you look way better now on the. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, let me see. Morning from Sydney. There we go. Marino and Mary. 
Uh, looks like some dial-up AOL connection. Oh, B's ready to go. So he looks good. Looked crisp. All right, let's get started. So this one's going to be a little bit different. We're not really doing like top five and things like that. More of a conversation. And it's not really from like, what can you learn from? Well, it's kind of is like direct competition. But at the same time, what can you learn about yourself and your business? Especially right now with things being dry and drier than they've ever been. Yeah. So, all right, here we go. Uh, from Simon, this is what he says. Straight quote. Uh, any participant in any industry can get lazy when there is little change in how that industry operates. And then when there's a sudden change of how the industry operates, everybody gets angry, panics, and points a finger. Mm-hmm. Now, when I, when I heard that, it immediately brought up like, you can get lazy, you know, when there is a little change, this and that, because like you're very comfortable, like things have worked. Right. Uh, so for my example, I would say when like Ross had changes to price, like cleats all of a sudden went from nineteen ninety nine to twenty four, twenty five dollars. Right. Immediately, it's like pointing fingers, like man, Ross hates resellers; they're up in the prices. Uh, it's YouTube, like Hustler Hacks is ruining this thing. Uh, Instagram, they're ruining this thing. Everybody's, you know, uh, showing their fines. So Ross is catching up. They're they're changing prices. Um, right now, I guess we could say lack of Nike inventory. Uh, Ross, did they lose their account? Right. Um, pandemic is because all these ports are backed up. And now we're not getting supplies in. And we're going to blame that. Uh, going to Nike outlet, there's no sales on the back wall. There's no MVP pass. There's no friends and family. Uh, they must hate resellers. They, right. They're on to us. Now we only get five per style. Who can I blame? Managers, corporate. So we're looking for different things to blame. That's what he's kind of saying here. Um, also says like, for an example, you know, taxi companies hate Uber. Mm-hmm. Now, the app isn't the problem. You can get a taxi on the app. You can pay on the app. There's different conveniences. Mm-hmm. The problem was Uber was just an overall better product. Right. And so he says, when you're the only game in town, you as a customer, you had no choice. Now that you have a competitor, instead of competing, you're getting angry. Mm-hmm. And I would probably say another example for this would be like Madden, the game Madden. Mm-hmm. They have... So they, they have a NFL has a deal with EA Sports. There's no direct competition. They own that market. And the game is pretty much the same every single year. All they do is update the roster. Right. They know they don't have to put in any more effort into the game. You're gonna buy it anyway. It's the same crappy product. Because there's no competition. Now, before NFL 2K back in PlayStation 2 days did have competition with Madden and it was a better product. It was a better game. And EA, EA sports had to figure that out. How can we improve our product? And in this case, they don't have to anymore. So they got lazy. And for an RN going into like Ross has been good for so long. Burlington has been good for so long. And I do think that we did get kind of like, man, I could find, you know what? Vapor max every week. Mm-hmm. At least something. A Jordan doing this, doing that. It was good. And you, you're you just kind of in that same cycle like, hey, nothing's really going down from here. I can just keep pushing it. And everybody's winning, mm-hmm. I guess. I would have to say for that. Yeah, I think when you said that, like the word that came up to me is like discipline. Um, it's easy to be disciplined or it's easy to do your thing when the times are easy. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when, like you said, when, when you really didn't have any competition or, you know, kind of like how the taxi industry has been for so long, right? The hotel industry has been for so long until we disrupted it. Right. So I think people forget that change is the only thing that's constant. Right. So everything will change eventually. So I think that's something that if you're an entrepreneur or if you're trying to live a life or if you're trying to live a creative life, 
where you want to design it. Um, you cannot take away the fact that something's going to change. There's going to be a curveball. Yeah. Uh, you know, in this uh, journey we call life, nothing's really going to be like a perfect scenario, right? Like, perfect example was last year, right? Like, you know, last year was, you know, in the back of our head, it was like, man, this is going to be the year, right? It's going to be the year that's going to take over 2020. You know, everybody said like, oh, 2020, you know, that speaks of a perfect vision. And then next thing you know, 2020 went cross-eyed, <laughs> so, right? And and you could tell like which business businesses that were relying so much on just the comfort of not having anybody take take from their current market. And then now all of a sudden they have to adjust, right? Yeah. And And when there's changes, when you're forced to adjust, it's so much different than actually being prepared that when something happens, you're easy to adjust. Yeah. I think perfect example is like for our, you know, for our line of businesses, capitalization and inventory, mm -hmm. right? I think that's, it speaks for everyone, right? When it's easy to source, when it's, you know, when the products are there, you know, a lot of times I think sometimes we're wasteful on our capitalization and then we're not maximizing our current inventory because all you can think is like, I'll find another Vapor Max. I'll sell this fifty under under market, or you know, selling your high end product so quick because you'd want that quick return. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've always said it like, don't make your quick return on your most priced products. Make your quick return on your lower end products. That's yeah. why they, there's that term they call bread and butter. But there ha there was a point that people made Vapor Max high end cleats their bread and butter undercutting people by 50 sometimes a hundred dollars right mm -hmm. like not knowing that man there's actually five competitions out there right all i gotta do is sit for like the next week or two and they'll be gone and i'm next and i'm gonna be holding the price but you know in general like no everybody was like okay he's lowballing it so i'm just gonna you know go with it and then you know it ruins it for everybody but it really only ruins for the people that don't you know that are not disciplined enough to just wait a little bit longer. So I think I think that's what I think that's the thing that came out to me. It's like we have to be disciplined uh, with the capitalization and inventory, um, so that when things happen, there's curveball like this that happens that we can't source the same profit margin like we used to. One is you still have products. Two is you should still have capital because you weren't you know you weren't too fast enough to purchase lower roi items because you're patient enough to wait for the uh, higher and higher profit items yeah i think one of the good examples would probably be like those uh, women's foam posits remember how yeah. they were like oh man they're everywhere they're flooded and some of the dudes that were letting them go i didn't find as many as i would like them I and some people right. found like 20 30 pairs um, but the ones that did wait, obviously they made way more money despite them being, you know, flooded. Right. I guess I would say, uh, let me go to the chat and see Kevin hit 100 K in sales last week. Go out and get it. I like that. So congrats, Kevin. Nice. Nice. There we go. Our case big, uh, activate hustle mode. Same with the auto industry. Uh, dealerships aren't making as much money from cars because of the internet. So now they're mm -hmm. making money from maintenance and service. A B likes cars. So B can, what you agree with the statement? hundred percent now because of the internet. Now you can, you know, buy cars from, from people, you know, from California, from Florida and stuff like that. So, you know, internet opened the world really. Yeah. And they bring it to you, you know, like, was it like five, six hundred bucks from yeah, like Florida five, to Texas yeah. or something? Yeah, like yeah, no, yeah. The furthest, I think, was like seven hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. That's cheap, right? It, like, it is. I mean, it's like cheaper than you flying there, driving all the way back. And then, you know, so 100 uh, percent. Let me see. A vintage profit or holding inventory too long and not turning over the money, which is also true, too. I mean, that's the thing with the game is like we don't know. It's like some things also go up, some things don't, mm -hmm. and you kind of have to make the best decision for right. you and your capital and your business. Mm -hmm. um, activate hustle mode, offering shuttles and Ubers and have nice waiting rooms with coffee, TVs, and internet. 
Mm -hmm. uh, vintage profit, you may have to take 10% less to get that capital back to flip it two more times in the same time it would have sold for full price. Uh, Antonio uh, has been empty on shoes, but I find clothes every day. Mile high hustle, waiting is one perspective. It's neither right or wrong. You can't hold products for more margin if you don't have the capital, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, 100%, but not having the capital shouldn't be the end of the day, right? Um, I think there are other opportunities that we can leverage. Um, one of the things that didn't bog me down was capitalization when I started. Um, you know, I know it was a, a little bit more extreme, but, you know, I maxed out all the credit cards because doing the math, it, it made more sense uh, paying interest because I knew what kind of profit margin I was making. And also there are other loans that you can get. Perfect example was uh, PayPal working capital. Yeah. Um, you know, I look back at the numbers. Uh, they were able to lend me $176,000. So, so I profited off of the money that I borrowed off, right? Yeah. Um, yes, or I, I paid interest, but at the end of the day, that's a cost of business. Those are write-offs, if you guys don't know. Interests are write-offs. Uh, um, uh, you know, bank fees, card fees are, are write-offs. The, the thing is, if you know your profit margin, if you know the sell-through rate, and if you know the value of your product, there shouldn't be a question why you should wait. The problem is people don't research their product in the market uh, deep enough. That's why they think the easiest way to say is I have to flip it quick because I don't have capital. That's the easiest way. But there are more ways to find capital. That's what I'm saying. Like, right. Mm. Um, it's it's not the end of the road. Right. Um, you know, I borrowed five grand from my dad. You know, I was interest free capital. Um, uh, I could have borrowed more money from other people if I truly wanted to, but at that point I got everything, you know, started, uh, rolling over. So, so I think, um, yes, uh, it's, it, there's neither right or wrong, but yeah, but I think what I'm trying to get here is you, you make sure you did everything first before you jump into the conclusion that, oh, I got to sell this quick because to be honest, everybody that sold everything so quick didn't do their research. Because if cause if they did, if they did their research, they would undercut us by five dollars, not by mm. fifty. Mm. You see what I'm saying, right? And if they did their research, they'd sell it for a hundred instead of ninety nine fifty. Yeah. Right. So so th those are the kind of people that just didn't consider those things, but shorted themselves of the potential profit that could have led them, you know, to to actually buy more products at the end of the day. Uh, BKK, what's up? And Stevie D, what's up? And Select Goods. Stores love resellers because they make money and get to move their inventory. It's individual employees and managers you got to watch out for. They're the biggest haters. Yeah, some want to work with you, some don't. Right. Big Money Mo, I remember last summer, people were thinking twice about $25 Chicago cleats because they got flooded. I remember that one. Wow. Um, it, it, it's wild because I don't know. I mean, we didn't. I didn't ever see it in my area. I found but, like three huh? or four. I Man. did not find too many. It, and this is something that I don't think we ever talk about. Remember when we bought those Jordan Eleven cleats that went on sale? Then we pay like forty, fifty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then if we would have waited longer, <laughs> we would have made bank. Cause what the eleven, <laughs> the bread Eleven cleats would have been like what two hundred bucks now. Uh, yeah, well, even back then, they were still yeah, we were flipping red 11 lows yeah. were still at like 150, 180. Yeah, you yeah, we were flipping pretty good. good. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, but but no, um, yeah, once you know the product, you're gonna go all in, you're gonna find a way. Uh, let me see, people are leaving them Jordan cleats for 17 bucks because they had too many. Mm -hmm. Uh, activate health mode, cool kicks. Uh, let me see, cool kicks also. That's true. Car companies can't rip people off like they used to make 50% off their income and service now. Mm -hmm. Um, also, with you know, you have like Carvana and Vroom yeah. and all these yep. other ones that <laughs> totally uh change stuff. So, um, let me go back. So, uh, what Simon was saying with like, let's say you know, if taxis would have changed to maybe we're like, you know what. Taxes had more room, cleaner, 
friendlier mm-hmm. drivers. Right. The music part. Some people like that for Uber. Uh, there's mm-hmm. water for you. There's different right. things that Uber does that makes it a better product mm-hmm. than taxis. Instead of taxis kind of like, you know, this was probably like, what, three, four years ago where really yeah. they had like trying to get laws done to where like Uber can't be in certain parts. Yeah, they can be in airports and stuff like that. But, you know, like at this point, they're just backpedaling because what, what truly happened, right? Like any other industry, they never tried to improve their service. They never yeah. tried to improve their service on their product. And just like anything else, just like any other business, you're just one person away trying to better what you're offering. And then you're out. You're not number one anymore. Mm-hmm. And so they also has another example, I guess, with. Uh, Starbucks, like blaming mm-hmm. Starbucks for taking out mom and pop right. coffee um, yeah. shops and things like that. And he was kind of saying that like he would, um, he couldn't have, I guess, like lactose intolerant and he couldn't have mm-hmm. milk and things like that. So he would right. go in some of the mom and pop stores like, hey, you have soy milk? Do you have this? Right. And they would say, no, we don't, have, yeah. we don't carry that. No, we don't right. have that. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like, well, you want to... I guess instead of hanging on and being in the game and making adjustments, bettering your your company, your business, and offering mm-hmm. these sorts of products, instead it's like, well, nah, we've never done that. I don't right. think it's gonna work. Why am I gonna try it? Starbucks does that. All right, let let them do it. Mm-hmm. And the next thing you know, oh, they're gonna do it. And yeah. then now <laughs> more and more people are going there when you right. also had that opportunity that. You know, maybe they did like your yeah. products and then you never changed. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, the creator of Starbucks were a uh, marketing guru. They researched what the customer wanted and they provided the demand, right? A uh, business is really is about supplying the current demand. And, you know, as, as the years will go by, the demand of people will change, right? It's, it's like, it's, you know, like it's, it's funny to say that, um, you know, people always say like, oh, we don't have to change and everything. But look at you. You're not riding a horse anymore. You're riding a car. So obviously you like change, right? Yeah. Right. Like, look at you. You have a camera phone. You don't have a telephone anymore. Obviously you like change. You're not reading newspaper anymore. You're reading it in digital form. Obviously you like change. And, and the people, it's like, it's really kind of like, I think it's, I feel like it's so egotistical for somebody to kind of like judge it. But really, even if the market already says it and the time already says it, you're still trying to backpedal and be, try to become romantic of what it was. Mm-hmm. It's okay to do that as long as you don't blame the change for your, you know, loss of loss of business. Yeah. It's totally fine. I mean, keep reading newspaper, keep, keep you know, keep selling, um, you know, lower end products, you know, but there's higher end products that you can make money, make more money on don't don't blame them you know the don't blame the other people that are selling it for more profit because you don't want to make more profit you know so i think it's, again it's like you know blame blaming and not taking taking responsibility hmm. so he says here like everyone's pointing fingers instead of saying we had it really good for many years and now what is our competitor revealing about our own weaknesses that we can learn to improve because that's what competition does mm-hmm. So he says, competition reveals your weaknesses to you. When you had no competition, you didn't know where you were weak. Right. This is the problem with everyone being the best. Mm. So somebody undermines you because they can see your faults before you can. Mm. Um, so I have, I have examples to go through this, but I mean, I guess going back to the first part, that everyone's right. you know pointing the fingers instead of saying we had it good for many years, which is not our example with Ross and Burlington Mm -hmm. and all of that. Um, And I guess my question for the chat was like going through this, let's say this struggle of sourcing things like that. Maybe it's not a hassle for you. Maybe you've, you've already adapted. You've already made those changes. You're, Mm -hmm. you're ready for Q4, but for the ones Mm -hmm. that didn't or aren't, what have you learned during this time, you know, that you can improve yourself and your business? Um, rather than just like, hey, this is Ross's fault. Hey, this right. is the virus fault. Hey, this is this is fault. Like, what kind of weaknesses did you have that you learned that you can keep building on going into the Q4 season? 
That's, that's um, a good question. Um, so let's see what the chat says on that. But let me go back to that. Uh, competition reveals your weaknesses to you. Mm -hmm. What do you think about, I guess, those couple of statements? I mean, if you want to compete, if you if you want to if you want to grow, if you want to be the best, or if, even if you want to be better, you're putting yourself in a competition, whether it's against other people or against yourself, right? Mm. That is over again. Uh, but again, ultimately, that your biggest competition is yourself today or yesterday, because yeah. what are you trying to transform yourself tomorrow? I think that's the, the biggest thing. Now, if you've done better today than yesterday, I think, you know, you should be able to lay your head at night and be like, okay, I did better today, right? But but what I cannot take, and this is one thing that, you know, uh, me and the wife acting as colleagues and business operators would get in argument about all the time. I'm, And, and I say this very harshly, and it's like, babe, that was such a rookie mistake. Mm. whether it's my fault or her fault we always say like i hate it so much i, I mean i i get mad i get really like animated as that like, that was such a rookie mistake and i always remind it's like how many years have we been in business already we're on our fourth year and we're still making that mistake i get so mad because we should be past that level we should be better so i, I think i think that's you know that what that's what comes to my mind when you talk about like competition because either either you're beating yourself or somebody out there has been earlier five minutes before you mm -hmm. and he's showing you what he got because you didn't wake up earlier mm -hmm. very true on that side i'm gonna see what the chat is saying uh they're saying potato phone just because you're pixel i don't know why it keeps going back and forth but b will come back at least right. we can hear him um I'm all for accountability. However, they do change the rules for the crybabies or them being of the rich, says Move Sailing. Uh, Big Money Mo, I knew from the get-go that not having product is number one killer, so I always stock up on good product. Big Money Mo. Key, good product. Yeah, good product. <laughs> not Plus just assassins, what up? Exactly. Improvement 1% every day, Baker Brand. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see, Hustle Crow, what's up? Just jumping in. Now you said that exactly. So competition could be, you know, local competition. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, hitting a different route, hitting the stores before you do. Um, maybe also creating those relationships with store managers or, you know, employees or things like that. Um, but at the same time, your competition that is somewhat direct competition could also see those flaws like, hey, this person, yeah, doesn't get up early. Mm -hmm. um, I know they don't drive to these stores because it's further out. So I already know they're going to lose out on that. Um, another thing you could do is um, maybe they're relying too much on one store. Like we would see it all the time in IG. It's like, man, these Burlington fines, they're fire. Um, but then when there was no Burlington fines, there was no more posts. We wouldn't right. see them anymore. So it was really just relying straight on that. Um, maybe just also relying on the managers and employees thing could also backfire on you. Yeah. What if you're relying too much on the worker? The worker's like, here I am calling this dude to come get Vapor Max, come get cleats. I could just do this myself. Yeah. Now they turn on you and they're like, I don't need to tell this guy to make extra bucks. Now I'm going to start selling it. Or the managers, which we, we've seen this from Nike outlets, they almost turned once pandemic happened. It's like yeah. some of them turn into like, man, I don't even know you anymore. Right. For real. Some, some of these managers were like, yeah, 10 per style, buy whatever you want, buy this and that. Then when things are struggling for Nike, they're like, nah, hold up. You can't use uh, your coupon now. No, no coupons, no this, no that. So relying on the manager part could also backfire we don't know just depends right. mm -hmm. um and we talked about that relying on the same routine never getting out there never trying to go further mixing up the times and so your direct i guess you would say competition that's in your area could you know could see those flaws and you also maybe even know 
hey, this person's leaving these things behind because they think it's a flood or they yeah. don't have the money to do it. Uh, the person that you can talk to also is like, you know, they don't have a certain capital or something. You can figure out these flaws and, and work sure. it to your benefit. Uh, let me go back to the chat and see. I beat my competition just by showing up. So many people are not used to pressure. So they fold so quick. Big money mo. Mm -hmm. um, and this, let me see what the chat says. Uh, that's a great statement. But what do you think about kind of like where we're headed when it goes to direct competition face to face? And they had a whole study. I don't know if we talked about this before on how they had like gaming tournaments. Okay. 2K, Madden, Mortal Kombat, different things. You know, you go head to head against somebody. Mm -hmm. And I forget it was at like a mall or it was at a convention center. It was somewhere. And, you know, this is what it's going to be, blah, blah, blah. And people showed up and some people quit right when they saw the rules because the rules was you're going to play somebody face to face or right next to you, I would say, on the screen in Madden or in 2K. And some of these people were so used to the headset, being at home, I can quit whenever I want. I don't have to face the embarrassment if I struggle and people quit before even trying. And that's wild. That, that already tells me that not only do you not believe in yourself, but where are we kind of headed in general? It's like, that's the way things go. No yeah. one's going to give you breaks to yeah. hire you just because like, no one's going to give you anything. And I remember back in the day, I think like PlayStation two days, I would, I would join Madden tournaments and things like oh, that. Okay. And, um, man, it was like, I remember I got, I got third place on one of them and it's just like, I don't know, going against somebody just seems natural. Like you're right next to them. Yeah. But what are they going to do? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, if you struggle, that's just what happens. If you're in a boxing match and you you're struggling, you get knocked out. I mean, it is what it is. You you can't hide behind a screen. No, no. <laughs> so let's see. Screen watchers be cheating though, Deborah Fanatic. Uh, let me see. Let me go back up and see. Uh, my competition is cool face to face. They're lazy. If they can't scan it in Amazon, they let me get it. Vintage <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I love those people. <laughs> if they don't uh, have, it doesn't have Amazon listing. They don't even try. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to say in the chat, um, what do you think? Do you have any kids? Or maybe even you. Do you play online? Do you have kids that play online? Do they feel embarrassed or ashamed or uh, quitting or anything when things get rough or they could uh, hide behind the screen or anything you want to throw in there? Um, let's see. Otherwise, people are generally nice in person and mean online, says Zapatos, which that's also... Yeah, I guess that's that's true, too. I mean, if someone really came in and I guess they were big and bad and they're right next to you, and I yeah. guess if you beat them in a game, could they try to beat your ass or something? I don't know. I, right. Could they compared to being online, they could just talk trash to you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, we live in a different world you know, <laughs> um, where uh, authenticity is hard to get, mm. yeah. which is, you know, we all have our reasons for all of all of that, but you know, just being authentic is so much easier. It's just so much easier. Uh, going back to this part here, so competition, as in the stores, stores being dry, Ross being great for so long. Now that it's not, what weaknesses did that expose in your business? What are you learning from it? And I would say, you know, for me, we'll do two phases. Two or three different phases. Number one, the YouTube phase. Once, you know, pandemic hit, what kind of changes did I have to make for YouTube? I didn't even get into it right away. I finally made changes down the road. But I knew once this was going to happen, stores are going to close down. Something's going to change here. I knew people were going to drop out, not be as interested anymore. It's going to be harder to source. Obviously, stores are closed. People are not going to be into that. What's happening with job situation? Um so that was a thing I had to change. Now, business-wise, um, I do feel that like the 
I don't know, some of the retros, I do feel like I could have waited a bit longer on them mm-hmm. and focused more on, you know, selling the clothing and things like that right. quicker than, let's say, the retros, which is what I'm doing now. But at the same time, that money that I did make, you know, is already reinvested in something else. So I can't really go back and say, like, well, it didn't help me. Right. Um, but as far as the Ross finds and things like that, I think everything selling wise went well. The money was there. ROI was there. Um, that money came back, reinvested in other things. I think that was good. Now, if it was to the point to where you're saying undercutting tremendously selling, mm-hmm. you know, $79, even though they bought it for 49 or 59, which we saw that too, especially with like Air Max 95s or, and it was crazy. I mean, there's some cheap prices. People sourcing their stores right. to hold on to to sell later on. Um, so that's what I'd probably say there. I guess my third aspect would be uh, like the Amazon side of it. And, you know, I, I got tired of returns. Like, how much money am I really making here? And so really right. sitting down, doing the numbers, I'll do everything every time something would sell and FBA or whatever. And for them to come back dirty, messed up, sometimes we'll even get the product back, brand new in box. I wouldn't even get the box anymore. Yeah. Just get dirty, worn shoes. You know, so now I'm looking at, is this really worth spending my time? I got to pre-label some of the things, mm-hmm. send them into certain, uh, send them in, you know, UPS and certain boxes, paying for shipping. Is this going to be worth it in long haul? And I didn't see it. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to force it just because it's like, hey, this opportunity is there. It's, right. it, it's working or it's not. Yeah. And I didn't see those numbers working. Right. All right. Let me go back on here. Now, with his statement saying, this is the problem with being the best at everything. This mm-hmm. is this is what I would go back to saying the the IG time, the like right. 2019 peak IG, everyone's fines are hitting, everybody's yeah. kicking ass at Ross Burlington Nike outlet, everybody's just killing it out there. And when it's not... Obviously, we've we've seen people that are just aren't doing it anymore. They're not selling anymore. They're not posting anymore. We don't know what happened. Maybe they did go into something else. Maybe they right. got a certain job. Maybe they're – we don't know. Uh, but that is kind of the problem as to where – what's your weakness when you're always killing it? Um, that is true. That I, is- I also think, like, <laughs> I guess direct competition football-wise, I would say going to, like – you know, let's say for the Dolphins, for example. Right. Man, you know, going through training camps, Tua looks good. Receivers look good. Yeah, we look good. We're playing the defense of our own team. Yeah. <laughs> what happens when we play an actual team and they're right. prepared? Mm-hmm. And we don't know. You look good because you don't know what the competition looks like. Yeah. So yeah. We can tell you all you want, but yeah. what happens when you're out there? It yeah. changes. The market will tell. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell real quick. <laughs> yeah. What's going to happen? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Going back to the statement, somebody undermines you because they can see your faults um, before you can. And some people will take some of the criticism differently. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, this guy's just a hater. This yeah. guy's trying to get one up on me. Um, but like we've seen here in the chat, you know, there's quite a bit of other resellers that do want to help each other out. I uh, want to see you succeed and help you succeed just like you want to help them because they also know that there's that room to, and mm-hmm. it's not really, Hey, I can just dominate this whole market when there's, there is room for multiple people to succeed. If you really want it, just like mm-hmm. big money, most said half the battle is just showing up. Right. Um, and so it depends how you're going to take that criticism you're going to improve it or not. Uh, I guess our example for like level up when, you know, B would let them know, man, like these, these photos need work. Mm -hmm. Uh, We only have, you know, some people only have three or four photos. Some of them were still doing the bad photos or, or bad lighting and things like that. So fixing the photos, you could take it like, man, B is just a hater. He's, he's just telling me like, you know, some people just take it to the heart or you're going to fix it learn from it and then now you can see some things improve Mm -hmm. yeah you got to be able to take criticism and feedback i think 
I think that's the biggest thing, like learning how to take feedback and evaluating the feedback. And if this is coming from somebody that you actually truly, truly hate, don't bother, right? <laughs> but if it's somebody that that you think, you know, cares for you and that you think wants the best for you, you shouldn't, right? And and it's something that I've had to learn growing up. You know, this is, you know, like me and my mom always butt heads, you know, because she always said something to say. She always thinks I could do better. And I hated that, right? I always said, like, why can't you just appreciate that I did this? And she'd always come back and say, well, because I love you and I know you can do better and I'm going to tell you when you can do better, mm -hmm. you know? So so I think that was a harsh training for me growing up. And, you know, being an entrepreneur, I've faced all that. And then I could, now I can say, like, yeah, that's, that's nothing compared to what my mom would tell me right now, you know? So, so I think... I think you have to accept feedback and evaluate feedback if that's something that you want to work on or not. And it's it's very it's very simple if you think about it that way. It, if you don't overcomplicate it, uh, and then you know, as long as you keep the feelings out of it, we all should be fine. Yes, sir. Let me see. Select goods. Whenever I see other resellers, I don't get frustrated because I know I got more places to source. After that one store, it is what it is. Uh, James Local Competition was telling me about people sending stuff back with cut marks from blades. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can talk about it. Maybe you can, can't. I don't know. But we talked about coffee shop. Mm -hmm. um, can you go into detail on? I don't know. Yeah. What you did or had or why maybe things worked or didn't work. Yeah, a generalization. I mean, yeah, well, like you know, I mean, we had we had um, we saw an opportunity, and you know, I had to come up with a business plan and then implemented it. And you know, I I, I found some, you know, two or three cool guys that I wanted to do it together, right? You know, obviously they didn't have the capital, so I loaned the capital, and I put up the money, right? Everything went great. Everything went great, you know, because they got. What year was this and where? And but this was in the Philippines. This was, okay. um, man, I can't tell you the year, but this was okay. junior. And so this was probably, I was like 18, 19, something like okay. that. Um, you know, and, and it, it was all going well um, because, you know, opening, right? We were like the biggest, we had the biggest business project in the university I went to. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was kind of like a big deal. Everything went great, right? Everything went super great. Um, what was the idea behind the coffee shop, though? Like what... So, so, so the idea behind it was uh, we want to provide high quality local coffee because mm. in, in my city, a lot of the good coffee gets exported already. So mm. because there are more that they, they have more demand outside. Problem is the locals couldn't find good coffee. Mm. So we saw that demand and I was like, okay, let's come in. And, you know, during that time, we're able to support local farmers and guarantee them the sale of their coffee. Okay. So they don't get lowballed. So I would say I'd pay X amount of dollars per kilo. And then, you know, you sell your products to me. And so that was the concept, you know, and we want to make it local in a cool hangout spot for like college students and stuff like that. So that's where, uh, that's where we, uh, you know, started. And um, it was just three of us in the beginning. And then, you know, we hired a barista mm -hmm. and then uh, a chef. To, to do stuff for us because we did some food as well. Um, it, it all was great until until everybody thought that we were already successful after three to six months. And oh, wanted man. to hire a manager, wanted to hire a waiter, wanted to hire a janitor because they think they didn't need to do the work anymore. Mm. So it got a little fancy. Yeah, yeah. It got, you know, like the hard work was cool. But when the glamour was gone, they wanted to, you know, uh, hire somebody else to do the dirty work, which was mm -hmm. you know, washing the dishes, opening the store early in the morning, closing it late at night. Um, you know, uh, they wanted to party. They wanted to, you know, hang out and not do anything. So it came to a point that I had to tell them, like, yo, we, we can't hire people because that's where all our profits will go. And, you know, like we're barely a year in 
and you guys really think that you know this is it we made it so you know i became a more vocal person because obviously you know i had the most in there um but but they didn't take it nice and they just you know start started kind of like you know talk talking behind my back and stuff like that that i'm like a, i'm like bossy <laughs> we're supposed to be partners but now i'm like kind of like such a demanding boss now now they mm. i treat them like an employee mm. but but all of this uh you know all the while while i was still opening the store every 4 a.m in the morning doing all the purchasing um and all they had to do was attend to customers you know mm. i ran i ran all the back end supply and everything uh, you know so i you know i had to manage the paying the bills and all that but everybody knew what kind of money we're bringing in so you know it it went it went to south when they were just coming in with you know kind of like a trashy attitude already and and it spilled over to like they're not treating the customer right anymore mm -hmm. they they didn't you know they didn't come in early anymore you know they didn't dress nice anymore they were just like man you guys you, you look like you just roll out of bed and you're trying to you know say hi to a customer that you don't not even you're not you're trying to say good morning to a customer where, where you're not having a good morning already so you got down to you know like we were still in the university it was our last year and you know we got we got our professors involved because uh you know they they were talking behind my back was that hey how are we gonna deal with ken because ken's being bossy already in the business so they created a uh, a story already behind it and while they while the professor were very careful because you know like they didn't want to ruffle any feathers but when they approached me they already had a preconceived notion that that was happening true correctly mm. so and it it didn't happen that way you know i had the waiter and the chef and you know a lot of people um knew that i was putting time uh that i wasn't demanding i was just asking them to do what's necessary i wasn't asking beyond what's needed um so it turned south and stuff like that because okay now they wanted to pull out they okay mm -hmm. okay i want to pull out they they put in some money yeah but it was it was some money that you know i we had it in the business but it would cripple the cash flow for the business if i gave it to them so so it went to like now they're like you know they're emailing the the dean because i wouldn't release the money yada 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 and i was like okay well we signed a legal document let's let's make this legal so i consulted with a lawyer and and the lawyer said they don't have the right to do that and not give you any notice and 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 you know we demanded for for them to clean up my name and it it was it was it was it was the mediation before i would have filed a case because it was a public defamation because they were uh, they were trying to ruin my reputation right in the university. Mm. So, because it was like three of them against me, so they were more believable. That and then obviously I wasn't there to you know kiss their you know you know their donkeys, the professor's donkeys, because I was busy running the business, right? Yeah. I was barely in my class because I was trying to you know get the business afloat, but. Got to a point where you know I was ready to sue him, or else you know, uh, but but um, I demanded public apology, and then I paid the most minimum per month of their money to him back. Oh man, this yeah, is so, so yeah, so so it got to a point of that, and then and then you know I just I just thought about it. It was a ruined relationship. It was a very ruined relationship that I thought that could have been a lot better and you know that was that made it easier for me to uh sell it off and shut down the business on my end because it was you know it wasn't it, it didn't become fun anymore it wasn't about the product anymore it became more of like who owns more or mm. who owned who right so power struggle and, yeah it was a power struggle right i mean at the end of the day it was all in all in our name right but uh, at the end of the day it's like you know like you want a title you want an owner badge or something like that <laughs> um but they didn't feel like an owner when they were waiting people but should i feel like an owner when i had to go to the market every day when i had to do the, all the grocery shopping they didn't know they didn't know that that um that it was a rude awakening for all of them and 
and sad to say uh, all of those people are struggling right now it's it's sad because because they were in a in, in their mentality we were in a business school so they thought hopping into the business it'd be like that but but you know i knew there was going to be a struggle so if they couldn't push through serving people not getting the recognition right away and feeling like they were bossed around well too bad the business will boss you around yeah. right like customers will boss you around so if, true. If, they, if they couldn't do that but they couldn't do it so so you know like it, it showed their character and and you know it's a result of what they're gonna get in life uh, let me go. So we're going to go, go back to the story. Let me see. Smooth right. selling $5. Appreciate that on Super Chat. Almost every time I donate to the Super Chat, I win. God oh, bless with the Jordan 4 cool. Lightning. Nice. Right. Smooth sailing. Also said about the Philippines. And he misses the Philippines. His grandfather lives there. So uh, it seems like a party town. <laughs> so smooth sailing. Um, uh, Marino and Mary says, good way to lose a friend. Start a business together. Right. Well, SA says family too. <laughs> well, there weren't real a real friend. If if you lose them over a business, there weren't a real friend or a family. Mm. Right? Because uh, because real friendship and real family relationship should go deeper than money. Mm. And and if if they get stumbled by it or they get butt hurt by it, then it wasn't deep enough. Uh, it also, kind of reminds me of of uh, that that. Story also comes out once in a while with like, you know, the worst Laker team that Kobe was on. Mm -hmm. And before the trade deadline, he's like, I just wanted to say bye to some of you bums that are going to get traded <laughs> later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so I think it's just kind of like, man, when you, when you already know the mindset and some people, like we talked about that before, when they get into the NBA, they, they do get that fancy lifestyle. Yeah. Like, hey, they I think already they deserve, made it. Yeah, right? They have that, this, I deserve this already, right? <laughs> and work hasn't even been put in yet. And right. yeah, you got the guaranteed guaranteed contract, but mm -hmm. you still got to You got to show up now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see. Let me go back on here. See the chat. Um, 80 plus watching, 28 likes. Hit that like button. Baker Brand. Appreciate that. SA, I'm doing what I, what I do solo. Uh, let me see. Let's see. By bumps, Palka Soul is coming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Y'all can't speak Spanish. Y'all gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they have a bonus one uh, from Simon's quote. And he says here that um, as soon as the pandemic hit, no one was looking on beating their competition anymore. They mm -hmm. were just trying to survive. Wow. He says, That's whether it is. Uh, recessionary times or a bull market that should be your attitude at all times survive and stay in the game as long as possible so he said I thought it was funny that we had no problem taking our eyes off the competition and focusing on improving our own systems and figuring ways to stay in the game that's what I call infinite mindset and it happened immediately mm -hmm. so it says infinite mindset of course is a lifestyle you can't do something once per day it has to be daily with all the factors that come into play you have goals set the goals but um it matters more on you know how you get there than when you get there mm. and so that was very true too as far as like how did that i want to know in the chat how did that feel competition wise with maybe the local competition other resellers and maybe even outside of that looking at comps things like that i definitely agree i mean it, it got to the point where like we could already see it once it happened once stores closed mm -hmm. how are we going to now figure things out for the business that it's going to run smooth going forward um and we could already you know see that once it happened and so in this case yeah it wasn't even more of like who has the best finds now on ig it was like i want to make sure i have my systems in place i can figure things out because i do want to do this and I do want to survive and I do want to keep growing. Right. That's not necessarily everybody was mindset going into it, but if that's yours, obviously you're still here. Right. I mean, I love his infinite mindset, right? Um, because he mentioned it like you have an at bat every day, right? Like, like 
he said imagine if if bowling was an infinite game and you just have to keep rolling the ball you just have to keep <laughs> rolling it until you hit a strike right but he said uh, and that's how we should live our life or our business because you know in the sport of business there's really no dead there's no end date yeah and and that's when i realized that you know like that word that comes out or that phrase is like i'm in this for the long term right so sh- small mistake won't hurt me because if i think about it if i'm in this for a long term i'm gonna make millions in this business game and if i harp on the hundred dollar loss or a hundred dollar mistake it's such a small percentage to what i'm gonna make eventually so yeah. i shouldn't get discouraged with that one small thing and you know same same way as right like if if something didn't go right in the in the in the start of your day it shouldn't cause you to to you know have an attitude a bad attitude for the rest of the day uh because we're in this for an infinite game and and that's why i say like when you have a uh an infinite mentality a mindset where even though there is shortage now now we're even talking about men someday there's going to be oversupply Mm-hmm. again right which we've seen right because as we always know that there's nothing that's going to be permanent and in none of what's happening really doesn't make sense because we've talked about this there was a shortage because of the slower production during covid it's black and white logistically everything got delayed black and white nothing really unless there's some alien invasion that that's out of this world everything should you know everything should make sense and if you're playing the long game you know un- unless we're retiring in the next two years glenn you know we should be fine yeah. right uh, and, and there's really no point to panic there's no point to uh to get discouraged but also if we're playing this the long game we have to do whatever it takes now to get us to our next goal yeah how do you feel? What kind of game is Ross and Burlington playing? Because they're building like two new stores, mm-hmm. like kind of oh. by the house, by my oh, house, which they, is I'm happy for it. They opened one and they're <laughs> opening another one by my house. Yeah. So, so that's a, exactly that's a long game mentality, because if they had a short game mentality, they would have canceled all their store openings at the start of pandemic. True. Because like, you know what, I don't know if we can get out get out of this. Right, we should right, be like, making like, stores. Shut that down, like close all the lease, uh, and stuff like that. But but they knew their projections, they knew their supply chain, even if it's gonna bug down. You think they don't know that it's gonna get bugged down, but at the end of the day, they realize their sneakers are not their main money making. It's their mm-hmm. mirrors, it's their frame, it's their blanket, which we make fun of. It's the lady section. And so far, all of them have been stacked, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so for them, they understand their own business. They understand the market. They understand the future of where they're trying to get to. So they've kept opening, right? It's not like it's not like Nike. Nike's, you know, Nike understood what they're having now. So that's why they've pulled back employees. They've pulled back production, which is for them it is what it is but for us and and all the discounts retailers moms are gonna still keep coming (laughs) and as long as moms are here that'll be 100 percent in business exactly price assassins they don't care about shoes they have mirrors and towels to sell yeah exactly (laughs) uh let me see most of the ross finds on ig are from lifestyle vlogger moms select Mm -hmm. goods yeah. Um, I think I think Ross has a section on their site with like IG or they feature oh. IG people and I mean most are women and, and Marshalls has that too. We should get a reseller on there. <laughs> how do we how do we upvote a reseller to be their oh, top yeah. on featured on their site and things like that? That should be funny. We should create <laughs> we should create a new account. <laughs> like you and me let's fill it up with just like fashionista things you can buy us and do mm, okay yeah we should try to figure that out <laughs> <laughs> uh let me see let me go back up 
Uh, Glenn finally talked to CEO of Ross to get more stars by him. Yeah, finally. Yeah, exactly. It's funny because, like, so over here they're doing Ross right next door to Didi's discount. So they're taking both spaces. And then three, four stores down, it's going to be Burlington. Wow. So they, obviously they're they trying to compete. They took over yeah. the mall, the strip mall, huh? Dabber Fanatic says Ross closed so many stores during the pandemic to get out of leases. Now they're opening new ones in cheaper leases. <laughs> yeah. Smart. <laughs> Right and and on better better uh, better uh, locations too. <laughs> that is wild. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see smooth sailing. I've learned my lesson to take advantage of the floods, but as many pairs of them foam posits as possible. And when dry season it came, had them all to sell. Bought at forty nine, sold one ninety to two twenty. Nike didn't choose to pull back big money mo. They chose to because they close. They're the one that shut down their factories. Very true. I mean, they could have had it operational at a lower minimum, but they, they, they probably did their numbers that it wasn't gonna, you know, be worth it. So they shut down. So, because at the end of the day, everything is really was under their control, right? Logistically, they could buy their own boat. Yeah. They just didn't have the products. Yeah. But international laws are different. True. Right. So, so it had to do something with that and restrictions and stuff, but, but. At the end of the day, right? Nobody's really losing money, and if they ever lose money, it's not really their money, and they could always file it as a. Uh, they they would always uh, they would they could always write it off. Big money, Mo. That was a political statement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me go back up and see. There was a Burlington coming to my area, and now it is not on the Burlington coming soon mm -hmm. list anymore. That is weird. Uh, maybe. I wonder where it's going to be. Maybe you can pass by and see if they're still building it or maybe what happened. Um, a lot of retail chains are doing that. But I mean, Dollar Tree just opened a new location in a spot that had been empty for a couple of years. There's what? so many Dollar Trees now. Dude. Five below. Man, we have five below. We had none. Now there's they're everywhere. Right. I mean, I, and at the end of the day, too, it's uh, it's you know, like majority of the population is in the middle class, right? So um, it obviously would make sense that the the middle class kind of like market would go up higher, right? Um, same way with, um, you know, Gucci and LV is not making, I mean, opening a lot more stores than Ross and, you know? So obviously, right, all those crypto millionaires didn't, really become crypto millionaires <laughs> let's see what the hell is five below everywhere i thought they sell ice cream <laughs> uh let me go back up price assassins if you can wait there is no such thing as a flood just an extended hold time yeah big money mo nike can't afford to have the reputation that their employees catching the sea monster mm, that too <laughs> that too uh, Dollar Tree stays packed. They can't build enough. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Has anyone found any Vapormax lately? Burlington, Marshalls, Ross. I don't think so. Well, because it's a past season item, right? And then we've yeah. bought them all already in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to source Five Below when they had uh, Amiibos pop up. Not anymore. Yeah, Five Below still had some like older toys and stuff. People definitely send in to Amazon, mm -hmm. things like that. Right. Uh, but again, they don't see in the future, and most companies didn't expect demand to rise up so high, says Big Money Mo. Yeah, I mean, nobody knew U.S. would have printed so much more money in the last year compared to the last how many decades. So um, that was a curveball. Curveball, but, you know, this big dog's kind of got the heads up already. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And be like, you know, release all the clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Even on the opposite end for the stocks, like we mentioned last time, like with Moderna, yeah, yeah. Moderna stock was just like yeah, it was like they <laughs> they dump all the Dookie stocks and start buying the 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 Real deal yeah or, or like the the what was that the highest probability for it to go <laughs> up during the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me see. Found Vapor Max two months ago. Burlington eighty bucks says Rory. So that might have been the recent. I mean, two months. Uh, let me see. Chip manufacturers have said do not expect any relief until at least twenty twenty three. Yeah, that's bad because even here, there's like a the parking lot of Kentucky Speedway 
is filled mm -hmm. with Ford trucks, mm -hmm. but they couldn't sell it because it's literally missing the chip. Chip, so it's all done. Like, it's like sitting in the parking lot, like Man. thousands of them. So they That's couldn't crazy. even. Like, yeah, it won't even roll because it's missing those, you know, chip. But, yeah. Um, did you guys pass on the Ralph Lauren jackets? Uh, I did pick up, what, maybe like six? I haven't seen too, too many of them, but I picked up the ones that I have seen, so. Oh, hook me up. I need a medium on those military jackets. Oh, that one I haven't found. Oh, uh, a medium <laughs> I, I found lot. that color block one. I still have, those I haven't even sold. Maybe I have, well, I haven't priced at 150, but. Color block, I'll, I'll check your stuff. Yeah. Uh, I feel horrible for Dollar Tree employees. They really seem to hate their life. For Since real. Rory. Um, yeah, that is... Dollar Tree got to be the highest turnover rate for, yeah. uh, for unemployment. So yeah, because like, like, there's like two people on like a store and they had to worry about people stealing. Oh, I feel man. like, yeah, they're always so suspicious for people coming in. They're, they're always like hawking people. And... I got, I, just saw, I got a small for you. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you think I'm a small? <laughs> I got a small. <laughs> you probably. Uh, there we go. MK has the military, a medium. Uh, you can see the four trucks from space, Intramorph. <laughs> Man. All right. Anything before we go? Um, this one was a little bit different. We didn't have a top five today or a top 10 or a top seven or anything, but uh, more of a general conversation on you know, what we can learn about some of the slower times about the, your own business and some of the things you can work on and learn about yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good, that's a good thing. I mean, you're not trying to, like we said, beat anybody else. You're trying to uh, learn from this competition more than anything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Learning, um, is always, learning is one thing that I've gotten to fall in love with over the last few years. Hmm. Um, because the more, you know, the more I look at other people that are way ahead of me, they're always trying to learn something. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, like the younger me would have been so like amazed, like, why are you learning? Why do you keep learning? Why do you keep learning? Why do you keep reading? Right. Yeah. Why do you keep experimenting? Why do you keep trying? And all of that, because they want to learn more. They want to learn better. You know, um, so so it, it has to be something that we have to adapt and instill in ourselves that we have to keep learning. Very true. Um, smooth sailing. Yeah, send me a DM. IG will figure that out. Uh, Inchomorph, say, same here. If I had this appetite to learn when I was in school, things have been very different. <laughs> uh, well, it's just, it's, but that goes back to, your identity and who you mm -hmm. are. And when you're a kid and also just growing up into high school, you're, you're not thinking that. No, you're not thinking that at all. So no, I don't. And also, yeah. And it's so it's, it's forced in you. Yeah. Right. And then we have this natural feeling when it's forced in you, you just don't want it. Yeah. Right. Even if it's good, even if it's going to be good for you, but you know, it just says with the education system that we have that, if they explained it in a way we're explaining things to people, why you should research comps before buying Dookie items, right? Like why we should look into or learn from people that have made this bad mistakes, that probably would have made us learn more or, or accept learning better. But apparently, you know, some teachers that don't care. So it scarred us uh, or scares <laughs> us, right? That we don't want to read books because reading books, you know, is, is, is boring. And well, that's what intramore plus are learning. Yeah. Uh, you're learning what they want you to learn. Mm. Not the things that are necessarily of interest to you. That is true. true. That is true. Education no. cares system cares about testing says S a, mm -hmm. you know what? Next show, we'll have, to, we'll have to talk about your identity and figuring that out because yeah. Yeah, like in high school, like I wasn't thinking about what am I going to do. I wasn't even thinking about college. I was thinking about got basketball tryouts for the team, thinking about girlfriend. thinking about the weekend, right? <laughs> yeah, thinking about driving a car. You know, I'm not thinking about college or anything yeah. like that or even business or nothing like that. And so, but on the opposite end, we have someone like LeBron in high school. Like, you think this dude's going to pay attention in class, in chemistry class? 
LeBron right. doesn't need to know chemistry. Yeah. He's been dunking basketballs in the NBA. Yeah, like exactly. he already knew what he was gonna do. Everybody yeah. else already knew what he was gonna do. Why yeah. even go to class? Like <laughs> it's gonna be in basketball. So that's a totally different thing. But we'll you know what we'll work that out for the next show. That's yeah. a good that's a good transition right. into the right. next one. All right. So uh thanks for everybody watching on Mindset Monday. And uh, we'll see you on Wednesday's usual live show. Yes, sir. See you.